Hey, welcome to another episode of Making Billions. I'm your host, Ryan Miller, and today I have my dear friend, Amy Hanlon. Amy is the founder and CEO of Blue Meta Design. It's a design firm that specializes on graphic designs and pitch decks for the major venture capital firms and startup founders. So what I'm saying here and what this means to our listeners around the world is a great design and a solid story can be the absolute difference between closing a round and Amy is hired by the best in the industry to help them get it done leading them to raise billions of dollars from investors, all from a great design and story. So Amy, she's gonna come onto the show. She's gonna tell us all of her secret tips. If I ask nicely and say pretty please, maybe she'll reveal a little bit of the discipline she's learned, how much she's been able to raise or, or other people have been able to raise off of her designs. There's a reason why the best and the brightest in the industry go to Amy Hanlon. We're gonna highlight exactly all of the tips and everything that she's done today. So Amy Hanlon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. Um, I love your podcast. I love your guests. So I am truly honored to be here. Yeah, it's an honor to have you. Um, I mean, you've certainly uh, carved an impressive path for yourself in a corner of the market to be known for uh, <laughs> all of the, the amazing work that you've done. And it is amazing. I encourage everybody to go to Blue Meta Design. Um, and we'll, we'll include the, the logo and everything uh, or the URL for you to find. But before we get into that, um, Maybe you can walk our listeners around the world. I mean, you're, you've done these successful things. I've set the stage of all this cool stuff that you've done. But maybe we talk about not everybody, like we all, had, anybody following this show, we all want to get there. We all want to make billions or at least be successful in some way, whatever that means to the individual. Yeah. So, yeah, you are that today. But in the early days, it didn't always start. Some people listen to this show, and I know them. They're just starting out. How did it start for you? Maybe bring us up to speed on... Where did it begin? And then you can tell us exactly, uh, you know, a little bit of how it got there and, and we can get into more details yeah. after that. So where did it start for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I have a very unusual introduction into tech and startup. That's not where I started um, by any means. Um, I have I'm a graphic designer by trade, went to college for graphic design. Um, I've had work at plenty of um, agencies and uh, companies. And at one point in my life, I decided that freelance, full-time freelance is the direction that I wanted to go. And in that, um, I actually got my first tech company um, based on a referral. Uh, fell in love with tech and the fastness of it, uh, just the excitement that tech has. And in that, I received another tech referral um, and then a VC referral. Um, and that's really kind of where everything kicked off. Uh, I got a referral, did um, a couple small projects for a big, giant global um, uh, VC firm. Maybe you've heard of it, Andreessen Horowitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it rings a bell. It rings yeah, a bell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in that, uh, you know, we had a great working relationship and they kept wanting more and more of my time to the point where I just, I, I did not have enough time personally to support them and support my other clients. And that's when I made the decision to pivot from freelance into building an agency. Mm. Um, so yeah, so built the agency, uh, we are about four and a half years old now. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a laundry list of clients that we've worked with uh, from various VCs, uh, PEs, private equity, uh, and a variety of startup technology companies. And it really runs the gamut as far as the verticals. We're kind of agnostic. Um, we work with a wide variety of them. So oh. that's my story. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, um, Andreessen Orwitz, that's crazy. Anybody would, I mean, a lot of people in this industry, if you know who they are, a lot of them would be like, I give them a right arm to work with them or some of the other people, some of their uh, competitors or colleagues. Um, and, you know, when you were working with them at that time, I mean, look, give us, peel back the curtains a little bit. Like, what, what kind of stuff do they have someone working on? And the reason why I'm asking that for fans around the world the reason why I'm asking that is I'm hoping to get an insight on the kind of things that they really, because they're investing a lot of money into design. And so what is it that Andreessen and Horowitz finds important? Hopefully you can tell us the stuff that they had you working on. 
<laughs> Very um, simple. Well, we're yeah. Still, well, yeah, we're still a partner with them. Mm. Um, it's uh, We still work with them. We really, the work runs the gamut. Um, mm. We have done everything from fundraising decks for them. Um, we do, uh, we work a lot with our editorial team, yep. um, to produce, you know, social graphics on social media, uh, a lot of inline graphics explaining trends and technologies and what they're seeing. Um, we do a lot of, uh, co-work with some of their startups that they're investing in through referrals from them. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we are, um, working on several bigger projects that I can't say yet. Um, there's a lot of campaigns that they do that we work hand in hand with their editorial team. Um, and, and really the firm as a whole is just growing so much. Uh, yeah. they have a large in-house design team now, which pre previously they didn't, it was all on us. So we work yeah. hand in hand with the design team as well. Um, events, events are back events are back so all right um events have been uh in person events are back so we are working heavily there um but yeah we it, it really it really runs the gamut of what we we work with them it's, it's a lot of marketing brand facing elements that we're we're collaborating on i love that and yeah mark uh events are back so um when you're in vc in the <laughs> professional world we call it events when you're outside and it's called a party so yeah so people are celebrating <laughs> So they get Amy to to put the decks together to to help them party a little bit. I mean, you know, it's we're all having a good time. So, um, but yes, it's an event, right? We we don't call it a party because we're more we're more distinguished than that. So that's right. Uh, yeah, thank you. No, I got nothing but love for what you do. Um, and what uh, Andreessen Horowitz and a lot of those clients. I don't want to make light. Um, these are phenomenal people in their industry that have done phenomenal deals and wonderful things. And you get a front row seat. That's why I was like, what are they? What do they have you working on in a non, yeah. uh, it don't break any confidentiality, but you know, that's, that's very helpful. So you can see the amount of investment that people do is not only in deals, but also in the graphic design and telling a good story. Now, before we get into that, um, so, so you've nailed it. You, you grew your business. I'm assuming, I think we spoke a little bit offline and you said, you know, Ryan, like I, I don't do, even though I'm a design firm, a lot of my growth is not from marketing and ads. It's actually from referrals. So it's, not only having the right, uh, as on this show, we talk about reputation and relationships and money and deals and things come to you when you've optimized your reputation and your relationships. And you've certainly developed a stellar uh, reputation relationships, both you personally, yeah. as well as Blue Meta um, in that industry. So after nailing it with Andreessen and All Things VC, you started Blue Meta. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I understand that your fund decks have been involved in some legendary fundraising. That's a lot of trust, man. I can tell you, I've been in some big rounds and some not so big rounds and fundraising rounds. And it's like, dude, you got a lot on the line, right? You put a lot of work, a lot of energy, your heart and soul into this deal, right? You've been up all night. You've been up early in the morning and the worst that could you imagine the wonderful deal? Everybody knows it, right? But you just can't quite get there because of bad design. I mean, what a horrible thing to not pay attention to, right? And that can happen if you don't have a design. And trust me, I recently received a, I think it was like 47 page pitch deck. I was like, bro, I stopped reading after slide 10. I stopped reading after slide 10. Like, so unless, unless it's really good design, then maybe I'll keep reading, but not 47 pages. So telling that just tells me we don't know how to communicate. And so people come to you to say, mm -hmm. I feel like it takes 47 pages for me to get it out. And you're like, VCs are not going to read your stuff. They're not going to get the message. No. <laughs> so how, like, do you have any sense? Do you keep track of your pitch decks and like the amount of money that gets raised? I mean, do you have any sense of how much, I mean, you're dealing with some big circles. Any idea what yeah. your pitch decks have been able to generate and capital raised? Yeah, so um, we do keep track of that because uh, oh. it's a big, it's a big selling point. Um, it's a big <laughs> deal. Uh, people want to know make, to make sure that they're working with a, a firm or an agency that is working on quality decks that are actually raising money. Yeah. Um, year to date, um, that has been publicly broadcasted. As in, find it on Crunchbase. There's Forbes articles. You name it. Yeah. Um, two dates. It has been uh, six billion. Six um, billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, but oh. it's actually probably a little bit closer to ten, um, ten. because we, 
we oh, work yeah. with a lot of companies that don't disclose some of that information. Yeah. Um, and but through talking with them, they kind of tell us what they have raised, um, especially like in private equity. That's not something they typically announce. Um, so yeah, it's uh, six billion. I could point exactly to all of those. Oh my goodness! Closer to ten, yeah. Amy Hanlon, big, we're about to be, big fundraising. <laughs> we're about to be uh, besties here. Uh, man, where have you been all my life? All right, so so anybody that gets trusted, so like to to the earlier point we were discussing, you got a lot on the line, and the last thing you yeah. want to do is to be like, I don't know what you're trying to say or how to say it, or I just it, this hurts my eyes. I don't know. Yeah. You, you know, I've seen all of them. And when they come to say, no, I, I've put way too much work into this and developing the relationship, building this deal. And that's from the funder side, but also founders, it's the same thing. And they have to raise money from investors. Both of them do. Yep. And so to go that far and to put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, don't drop the ball on design on your pitch deck. This is not the point to cheap out. Andreessen Horowitz does it, it so it must be good. And and many, yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't have to tell you that. So so now ten six billion confirmed, but likely ten billion because not everybody discloses. I respect that. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely insane. So after doing about six to ten billion, let's just say ten. I don't. It's a nice number. <laughs> Easy math for me. So you've done ten billion dollars. Well, your designs have been done uh, processed through ten billion dollars of fundraising. Okay, so doing that. My next question is, you, you've, you must have found some key elements and, and you've been doing this long enough of things that work, things that don't, either from design and pitch decks. I mean, you've seen it all. Yeah. What are some of those key elements in successful pitch decks that tend to raise $10 billion? What have you found that leads to a successful pitch deck? You just want all my secrets. Okay. <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will spill some of my secrets. Um, All right. So it really comes down. There, there's um, a few things that it comes down to. Um, the first thing is um, we backing up just a little bit. We sure. are a creative agency. So mm -hmm. we don't just do pitch decks. Um, we have been extremely successful in them, but mm -hmm. we also do branding. We do websites, we do marketing collateral. Pitch decks kind of fall into that a little bit collateral area. Yeah. Um, so when we um, work with a client and we're looking at their deck, um, we start with the branding. We really want to get a sense of who this company is. Um, branding is not your logo. Oh, that's awfully... Oftentimes, that's what people immediately think of. That's that's not what your branding is. Your branding mm -hmm. is so much more than that. Your branding is your messaging, your tone, your company's characteristics, but then it's the visuals as well. So it mm -hmm. is your logo. It is your typography. It is your color palette. It is everything visual that makes your company who it is and is talking to your target audience. Hmm. So that's the first thing that we really look at and um, dig into. And, and a lot of times, you know, we hope and pray that they have a brand guideline. Sometimes <laughs> we have the baby clients, we call them the baby clients. So the seeds, you know, like they're yeah. just getting started. A lot of times they don't have those elements. Sometimes even a series A, you don't have all those elements. So right. it's working with them, um, what they currently have, but then finding ways to elevate their brand um, to make them appear bigger and more established than what they are with some, some visual elements, mm -hmm. um, a B or a C series, you know, they have those. So it's, it's much easier to apply that into the pitch deck. So oh. that is the absolute first thing is the brand. So effective um, branding. The visual, mm -hmm. Yes, it is the visual and it's the tone, it's the voice, um, making sure that's really coming across in the pitch. We want the investors to understand who these companies are with the mm. visuals. Right. Um, the second thing that we do is the storytelling, mm. your story arc, your story flow. Um, that is probably the second biggest thing that we see constantly that people are missing. Mm. Um, it runs the gamut of too many numbers. It runs the gamut of too much business model, business strategy. Um, it runs to 
just showing the product. And that's not what an investment pitch is. No. Um, and oftentimes it's long winded as well. Like you said, 40 slides that, that there's no investment that's ever going to read through 40 slides. They don't have time. They're busy. There's people. No way. Yep. Um, it, it's just no way. Um, really for a seed series A, you're looking at 15 slides. Hmm. Um, B, you're going to add a couple more. C, you're going to add quite a bit more. You're more established. They're going to want to show um, the traction and, and what you've done for the return on the investment. So there's a lot more that goes into those. But starting out with, um, you know, the A and the, the Series A, you have to nail it at 15. You cannot go past 15. You cannot. Um, 15 is the magic number. Okay. Typically, your meeting is about 30 minutes. So you want to talk about 15. And that last 15 minutes, that's when the magic happens. That's when the conversations happen with the investors. And that's when you, you understand when they're engaged and you can, you know, have open conversations. Yeah. That's when deals are made. I love that. So, um, <laughs> so to, to summarize those things. So these are, these are the tasty tips that thank you so much, Amy, for, for sharing a little bit of that secret sauce that you've been able to find. <laughs> Um, and so effective branding and telling a great story and branding is so much more, as you said, just to recap, branding is so much more than just a logo. It's really about mm -hmm. representing things in the graphic side of things. So it's right. I've seen a lot of pitch decks that are just, they're reading a novel and you're saying, no, like your design and flow has to go with it. So there's some congruency in your message. And, yeah. um, and in between a good brand and a bad brand, I would say a good branding that it attracts the right customers. Poor branding, I would say, yeah. uh, would you agree that poor branding might attract yeah. people, but not the right customers? So you got, then you're going to have just from bad branding, you could have skyrocketing customer acquisition costs with little revenue. Exactly. And then, yeah. And then exactly. now you're in trouble. Yeah. It affects so, everything. It affects, it affects everything. everything. Yeah. So now I hope our fans around the world can kind of see, start to see exactly Amy's world and enter it. And thank you for bringing us along is you're saying, no, effective marketing is more than logo and just flashy designs. To, you know, this isn't a fishing lure that you, you're trying to track. You're really trying to do business and communicate exactly the value and the kind of customer. Right. Is it whimsical? Is it serious? Right. What, what is it dark? Exactly. Is it light? What are these emotions that you're trying to elicit through design? It's that's what art does, isn't it? Art is emotion. Yeah. And so using yeah. that stuff and people that understand how to use it to impact the investor community, whether you're a funder or founder, same thing. Now, you, now you're working with the pro. And that's exactly why some of the top in the industry trust Amy with their, their biggest fundraises and get people up to $10 billion in fundraising, all <laughs> from effective branding and telling a good story. I can't believe that. I mean, as simply stated, there are so many levels and depth to that. But we're talking about art on an audio video program. So while I got you on the phone or, or whatever platform we're on, <laughs> do, I mean, right, we could talk about this, but don't tell me, show me. Is it possible? I, I, I'm putting you on the spot here, but do you have any examples of kind of before and after or any type of uh, sample that you can share for our viewers that are watching the video and Audio, go ahead and head over to YouTube. You can see some of these examples if you want to see what a uh, little bit of Amy's work, assuming you got some. Is there anything you can share with our fans around the world? You know, I just so happen to have something. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you might, yeah. All right, well, good. Good thing I asked because I just put you on the spot. So, yeah, feel free yeah, to share your yes, screen. You and All right. Sure, sure. Um, let me go ahead and share here. All right. All right. First off, Ryan, can you just confirm that you can't see my screen? I just want to make sure before I move forward. Yeah, it's just loading. Okay. Let me know when it has loaded. Sure. All right. I can see it. All right. Perfect. So before I um, show a couple of examples, um, one thing you know, you're talking about art and yes, graphic design absolutely kind of falls in that category. Uh, it's, you know, creative, uh, we're creative people, but, um, one thing that graphic design is that just, um, sets it apart from any other, you know, creative industry is graphic design is problem solving. So that's what's mm. so different, um, for graphic design is we look at a 
a problem or a blank slide or a really messy, very poorly designed design uh, deck or slide. And we we don't just go in and make it pretty. That's that's not the point of this. The point is to visually showcase a problem or a solution. We are problem shop problem solving and making sure that we're highlighting the most important element on a slide. And especially with pitch decks, we want to make sure that we are highlighting the main point of a slide. Um, and we want to make sure it's the focal point. So one of the big things when we're working with clients is we always have, um, a, in, in a kickoff call, we always have our clients do a dry pitch to us. Mm. Um, it's very informal. But what that gives us is an insight of how they talk. It gives us an insight of what they're um, emphasizing on a particular slide. So we can make sure the visual visual elements of that slide are emphasizing what they're talking about. Um, and a lot, of a lot of times we are taking lots of text off and putting it in a talk track and making the visuals tell the story as the founder is pitching the story. So you don't need to have all the text on the slide. I think that that is the number one thing that a lot of people get wrong in their pitch deck is trying to just put way too much words words on the slide versus letting the visuals tell the story while you're verbally pitching it to a, an investor. So with that being said, um, I, I do have a couple examples. So um, the first couple slides here are actually um, before and afters. So this is um, a Series C consumer company that we worked with. Um, this particular deck actually raised $90 million. Um, And you can see, um, I will give a preface here. This is all confidential information. Uh, logos have been removed. And um, a lot of times we actually change the text, but we also blur it out mm -hmm. because it is um, very um, confidential. So... But in the upper left-hand corner, you can see kind of what we started with. So this was very much a flywheel visual that they were telling. Um, but as you can see, it's um, pretty plain. Um, it's not showcasing the brand. It's not showcasing uh, what the product is um, in any sort of way whatsoever. And what we do is we go in and really elevate the slides to showcase the brand but still having those visuals that flywheel um, as the focal point. So it's much more simple. The information is there, but when the investor looks at this, it knows exactly what they're trying to say. And there's a clear understanding of what this particular slide is trying to convey to them. The next slide here, uh, this one's not quite as blurred out, but this is just a typical team slide. So it's a lot of times, you know, you don't think about uh, applying a lot of design, but as you can see the before and after, this is a team slide. We're just elevating it. Um, this company with the re redo of this particular slide is much more elevated. The information is much clearer. Um, I'm sure one thing uh, the audience may notice is some of the logos that are shown on the first one that we didn't include on this one. That's because it didn't fit on this slide. It actually fit on a different slide. So that's part of our process when we're working through the story flow and story arc at the very beginning is making sure all of the information is making sense throughout the entire pitch. Let's see. Then we have another one here. This is a fintech company. Um, you can see on the upper right, it's just overloaded with text. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no correlation between some of the bigger stats and the bullet points, and they absolutely did correlate together. So that's how we reworked some of the content, really engaged some more visual interest on the slide, um, there's a focal point, your eye knows exactly where to go um, and telling that story. And then I have one more before and after, and then I have some just general um, examples. So this is a sports app company. Um, this is just kind of the ask, the fundraising slide. Um, 
again, you can see before it was very uh, lackluster. And a lot of times this is what we get when we're working yeah. with um, companies. They're just putting all the information on the side. Like, we know this is what we want to say, but we don't know how to say it. We don't know the visuals to include. Um, so we work with them to really elevate it and make sure it's brand appropriate and telling the story and calling out everything very clearly um, for an investor. Like they know where to look, they know the information that they need to look at. I love so it. Moving, moving just, from, uh, oh, from pies yeah. to donuts. Sorry to interrupt. It, it was just a, a little pies quick. To donuts. <laughs> yeah. So the pie chart to the donut charts, my, I, I do, I always tease uh, my analysts and let them know, I'm like, give me more donuts, less pie. So uh, yep, yep. I, I, I'm I, glad I we agree. That way too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Donuts are way better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the other slides that I have here, these, these aren't before or after, but these are just some more uh, design examples, just like these really big, beautiful moments that we have mm -hmm. uh, with the red slide, really telling the mission statement is what this one particularly is. Uh, the bottom right, is just kind of a table showcasing the, the competition and, and, um, you know, showcasing how they are separate from their competition and, and what they're doing different. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have um, some, this is a TAM chart. Um, and you'll see there's nothing blurred out because there was no privy information on this one. Uh, no. This is information you can get pretty much anywhere. So just examples of kind of what a TAM chart could look like. Um, the one in the upper one, these are kind of what we call buckets. So mm -hmm. a lot of times if there's like buckets of information, it's a great way to separate them out and talk to them individually versus a bullet. Yeah. Bullets are boring. So we try to eliminate bullets whenever possible. Not always. Uh, here's a couple other examples of some bullets. Um, the upper one is actually showcasing some successes of uh, some portfolio companies that a VC had. The bottom is for a FinTech company showcasing just a prime to prime and some additional information, uh, kind of showing trends that they're seeing in the marketplace. Right. And then we have just a couple more. So um, sometimes you have bright, beautiful colors, as you see here, um, showcasing some examples. And then the bottom, uh, this is kind of just a case study that we have and, and showcasing it just in a completely different way, just utilizing design to lead the eye into different areas that you want to focus on, but still making it beautiful. Um, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, founders are building these wonderful companies, but they don't yeah. know how to put it all together. And that's kind of really where we come in is helping yeah. them put everything together and working through that story arc, making sure they have that uh, bell curve in their story um, to keep investors intrigued and to keep uh, the focal point on the crescendo of that story. Mm. Brilliant. But yeah. That's, yeah. That's all well, got. just a couple of examples. <clears throat> I love that. So you can see uh, a little bit of here's where it shows up and here's where it, it when we're done with it, how it looks. And you can see these subtle design changes, but um, some of the largest VC firms on the planet come to Amy to know to say, yes, we get it. These are subtle design changes, but we need them to be done because, like you said earlier, of, of your, your a few of your tips that you're able to share on effective branding and telling a good story and making sure that that design is also part of the story, right? Bright, dark, right? Up, upper left, lower right, whatever that is. And um, so having those design elements um, are absolutely critical. So thank you so much. I'm glad you, you had something there uh, ready to go. But um, and then, you know, finally, as we round third base, is there anything else that you would want our fans around the world to know Some, you know, anything at all? Um, I, I think as far as pitch decks, um, there's really, I think one of the things that sets us apart other than us being successful in the space that we have been so far is, um, we work with technology companies, startups, but we also work with a wide variety of VCs, wide variety. It's not, it's not just the one that we have mentioned um, yeah. during this podcast. So um, in that, we do actually work with the GPs very closely and we have mm -hmm. access to them. Um, not many people can say that. Yeah. So in not many that, graphic designers. We... Yeah, not, not <laughs> a lot of graphic designers know what a GP <laughs> not is. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a lot of agencies. So, yeah. So in that, you know, uh, this is really, this is the, 
this is what we focus on. This is what we're great on, this industry. So with us having access to those GPs, we're really able to kind of ask the questions like, what are you seeing? Like, what are you not seeing? What do you want out of these pitch decks? And really understanding when they are listening to founders trying to understand who they're going to invest in, we understand what's working, what's not working, um, maybe some new trends. We are sending, we are sending, seeing some new trends re- recently. So that's interesting. We're keeping an eye on that one. Um, but it's really, there's, there's like a story flow that investors really want to see. Um, start to finish, there's a little bit of flex in that story, but it's, that's what they want to see is this very specific um, ticketed item. And we follow that um, depending on the company, depending on the story, we make some adjustments to make sure it makes sense. But um, there's really very specific information that they're looking for. So I'll give a few tidbits here. Um, I'm sure most investors know this or most uh, founders know this, but um, one thing that we're constantly seeing um, which always surprises me is they don't clearly define what the problem is mm. um, in whatever industry that they're in. Like they're not saying this is the problem for our target audience or this is the problem in this industry. Yep. And then they're not showcasing how exactly they're solving that problem. Mm-hmm. They're not showing how big the market is. Um, you know, you may start out in a small niche market, but you can show multiple layers of a TAM and show like we're starting here and then we're going to this and then we're going global. Mm -hmm. So, you know, investors, uh, the other thing I always try to tell um, all of the startups that we work with is keep in mind that you're pitching to an investor. Yeah. They want a return on their investment. Shocking. This is a business transaction you can't just say this is what we do like you have to showcase Mm -hmm. how you are going to be successful and how they are going to get that return back that's right yeah i love it return plus (laughs) yeah yeah and then some yeah i love that so you're you're like uh, i i I, yeah i gotta introduce you to more vcs you're like or more founders (laughs) i guess i hope founders are hearing this She's like, I will save your life when you get in front of a VC or even VCs are going to, they have limited partners or LPs, their investors. Oh, yeah. You still got to go in front of them and be like, here's how you're going to benefit. Now, hopefully VCs have heard enough and they've been through the pain. So they know exactly what not to say, how to, how to kind of simplify things. And Christ. you got it. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe not. But uh, the ones that know what they're doing, know they need to go to Amy. Let's just put it that way. And so, um, you know, it, it really comes down, and I tell a lot of people, hey, when when you're pitching, whether you're a funder or a founder, uh, if you're getting in front of an investor, y- you want to sell the sizzle, not the steak. But with the fine print to that is too much sizzle and you sound like the, the metaphorical used car salesman, too much steak, you're going to put them to sleep and you're going to have a 47-page pitch deck. And so finding that right balance to say, Here's the problem that we have. Here's the solution that we're going to address it. And here's how you're going to benefit when we're done. Amy is the person that helps you to arrive at that kind of a presentation, which, as we know, can break billions of dollars in your pocket. So as we summarize everything, as we wrap things up, just to recap everything that Amy has taught us, and I feel like we just scratched the surface with you. So we'd love to have you come back on at another time. But, you know, effective branding is really about telling a story through the graphical things. So not just the words you write. And that's not your story. That's not telling everything. So learning to actually have every single element and space taken up so that there's congruency in your story is critical. Number two is telling that good story. So there's a positive story arc. There's people that are great at telling stories and some not so much. But it's more than words. It's more than just writing things out or speaking it. It's how you're designed, how things are perceived, and attracting the right customers. Selling the sizzle and not the steak are one of those key critical elements. You master those things that Amy has taught us today, and you too will be well on your way in your pursuit of making billions.